I was a kid, 10, 11 years old, I had a paper route. I used to fly down the hill like white lightning on my skateboard, standing on my hands, paper sacks strapped around me, all the evening capital newspapers rolled up into a, a roll with a little red rubber band wrapped around everyone. Fly down, stick the newspaper in the, the red plastic box. Best part of this whole job was once a month, you collected $3.50 from everybody in the neighborhood. So you got to get inside their house and see what they is like. On collection day, the first stop was Mrs. The Riot. Mrs. The Riot. Oh, God, Mrs. The Riot. Come in, Mitchell. Mrs. Darius stood 513, 512, had long, fiery, burning red hair. She wore this tight leopard skin suit, 25 inch stiletto heels, long, candy, red nails. She had a God given Roman Catholic backside. Oh, Mrs. Darius. shake when I came up to the door and I'd ring the doorbell and the door would just slowly creep open and I would look up and there she'd be looking down at me Mrs. Arai evening capital evening to you Mrs. Arai collecting she would say Mitchell come in dear boy come in and I would start to knock my knees and shake eyes were on fire like a Roman candle. Her lips were shiny, thick, and gleaming. Every nook and cranny of her house had little crosses and religious stuff. She had a table right when you walked in that had a gigantic Bible, nearly as big as me. On either side of the Bible was a fan. One fan would go on and blow all the pages to one side, the other fan would come off and blow them all to the other side. And these crosses would dangle in all the candlelight, and shimmy, shammy, all every bolt of love and arrows in a little 12 year old preview. That's <laughs> paper boy's heart. Is that a boy or a girl, Marge, who delivers the papers? You can't tell these days. Three dollars and fifty cents, Mrs. The Rye. She would kick on the stereo. Her hi-fi and Brazil 66 would come on. She would start mamboing all around the room. Those God-given Roman Catholic hips. I must have came, my nose came right up. To me. I'd look up at her. Say, Mrs. The Rye, you are so beautiful. Oh, dear boy, Mitchell, I look so f favorable to these days when you come. She would start mamboing around. Every flash and bolt from the crosses would beam and shake the whole house. My knees would be knocking. She would saunter back to the kitchen, get the money, and slip it in my pocket. Say, I love these, I love these collection days. Oh, Mitchell, dear boy. And I would go to leave and just Every time as I would go to leave, I would reach my little hand up to the big brass doorknob, knowing what was coming. It was like a ritual. I anticipated it every day. I would reach up very slowly, start to turn the knob, and she would say, Mitchell, dear boy, aren't you forgetting something? This is the ride. I would slowly turn around, anticipating, anticipating every slowly turn around and her lips would start quivering, these shiny, beautiful, thick red lips. She would arch her back and st stick that God-given Roman Catholic tail. She would slowly, slowly open her mouth, and revealing these cosmetically filed fangs, and they would reflect every glint of bolt of love in the whole house. And she would start cackling, and slowly this 55-inch tongue would all 
unravel out of her mouth, curling high up into the air, and on the very tip of it would be a silver dollar, just perfectly balanced. And I would, I would jump as high as I could, jump up and snatch the 50 cent piece, slip it in my pocket and run like hell. This is the ride. Marge, is that a paper boy or is that a paper girl? The door would slam behind I'd be nervous as all, all sin, reaching in my pocket to light up a cigarette. Whew. That misses wow. Across the street, Dick Tracy lived. He was the opposite of Mrs. The Ride. He was a Mephistophelizing, worshipping, dark Satan, Satan, a worshipping man. Dick Tracy would answer the door in a slick Kmart Dracula cape and fake fangs. And he would stare down at me, his hair slipped black with black oil. And said, Mitchell, I want to suck your blood. I want to suck your blood. I was collecting even capital 350. But Mitchell, I want to suck your blood. He had pictures of Aleister Crowley in every nook and cranny of his house. Four little coffins, one for his wife, Mrs. Tracy, who would be standing buck naked at the end of the hall, with her back looking over her shoulder, licking her lips. She would sleep in one coffin, he would sleep in the other, and the other two coffins were for his kids. Three dollars and fifty cents, but Michelle, my mother. I had to bring along my friend Vito. He had to see this. He wouldn't have, I knew he wouldn't believe how how this Paper out was the best thing that, uh, you could do. So he started to come. I said, you got to see Mrs. Tracy. You're not going to believe this, Vito. After he came, he was with me every time. But Mitra Vito, I put on to suck your blood. Finally, he would cough up the 350. And we would leave cackling and laughing around the road. up all the way to the top of Breton Place and stop at Mrs. Cuco's house. She would answer the door. She stood 10 feet tall, weighed about 30 pounds. She would have a bottle of Jack Daniels in one hand and George Dickel in the other. She would say, hi, boy. She thought the newspaper we delivered to her was a submission to her arts, her magazine of arts and poetry. We would say, Mrs. Cuco. It's just the news. We deliver the same crap to everybody every day. It's not a submission to your magazine of arts and poetry. But she would go in one ear and out the other. And she would say, you boys are so, so talented. One day you'll be featured, featured literary in my magazine of arts and poetry. Promising talent. Please keep submitting. Don't stop. She would invite us in. Sit us down at the kitchen table, and her son would be dribbling a basketball on the back. She would sit down a shot in front of Vito, and a shot glass in front of me, and we would go, and a shot glass in front of her, and we would go shot for shot. Until she started crying into that shot glass about her husband who fought in the Federation War. She had pictures of Leonard Nimoy in every nook and cranny of her house. She had painted a mustache on every one of them. Tell us what promising young talents we were. She would start to slobber and slur a word. We would start to stumble and dance around her kitchen. We would eventually have to go because she would never pay us. And as we were leaving, she would say, Don't stop submitting. You will be featured. And we would go in unison, it's just the news, Mrs. Cuco, we deliver the same crap to everybody in the neighborhood every day. It's not a submission to your magazine of arts and poetry. Vito ran over the people across the street from the Cuco's cat. We got fired. The end of the paper. We needed some kind of income, so we went to the Green's house. 
they had crops of marijuana growing in the back. And they would pinch some leaves, dry them out, and sell nickel bags. The money was better, and we had a lot more fun. This is the ride. Is that a paper boy or is that a paper?